Oh, hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, we're taking a look at version 24.1. And uh, this is being queued up behind the scenes for release. Uh, we think it's going to trickle out later today or tomorrow it just depends on a couple of small factors, but uh, we'll be showing you a bunch of cool things. And then we actually have two more releases that will follow it in quick succession. Uh, another one in a couple of weeks, and then another one about a month or so after that. Uh, we have a, a bunch of really important, cool events on our, our plate this spring coming up where we'll be um, meeting people like the National Association of Broadcasters show, and we'll also be going to Roots Tech, which is a great event for the family history and genealogy space. So we have some really cool features that support those types of users that we're just finalizing and tweaking. And we've got a lot of uh, short updates coming in quick succession uh, because there's a lot of really important things we wanted to get out. So uh, we're really glad you guys can be here today. We've got a lot of great stuff to show you. I'll, I'll welcome your questions as you go through. Uh, if it's a question for me, you could put it into the Q&A pod and uh, you guys can also react to questions or upvote them. If you all see a question you want answered, it'll move it to the top of the list. Uh, and then also the Q&A pod, um, the chat is there as well if there's things that you just want to react or comment with each other. But we'll take questions from the Q&A pod and feel free to chat with each other or just, you know, what's on your mind in the chat pod. All right, so welcome. Uh, we we're talking about Mylio Photos today, and we'll also cover a few features that are unique to Mylio Photos Plus that require you to have one of our paid plans, uh, but I'll, I'll spell those out. Um, we'll go over some of the new and benefits. We'll talk about the release details and take questions and uh, kind of walk you through what's new and improved. Um, so as I said, this is coming really soon. So uh, we've got it just about queued up. Um, people are just doing the behind the scenes things of pushing it to different servers right now and getting ready to, you know, pull the levers at the right time. So uh, we're very excited that this is coming out to you. And uh, my name is Rich Harrington. I'm a member of the product team, and I'm also a photographer, a video director. And through the years, I've uh, written a lot of books and video courses about photography and video to help people as well. And uh, just so you know, we are, of course, recording this. As I said, feel free, though, to put your questions into Q&A. And uh, we will make the replay available shortly after this event in case there's something you want to dig into. Um, we also have an updated product manual uh, that will be shipping soon, and uh, we'll be releasing other content as we get going. All right, let me go ahead and uh, put this away, and we'll jump right in. So thank you guys for coming. And um, you're going to notice a lot of things uh, about Mylia Photos that look different or subtly different. That's because we've, we've added a bunch of new features. And uh, we've also made some additional improvements and cleanups. We're in the middle right now of uh, finishing up a bug fix sprint where we have just been tackling bug issues and uh, things submitted by community members. And so we got a lot of those that'll be coming out very soon. But uh, you might notice here, for example, the right hand panel, for those of you paying attention, has actually gone through quite a bit of cleanup. And so it'll be easier to read, it's more visually consistent, and uh, you'll find just a little bit across the board, uh, just a little bit simpler, smoother stuff there. Okay, so uh, as we're jumping in here, uh, we've added a new section for connections. So connections are going to allow you to um, create things where you've got connections between Mylio and people. You'll see this easily if you go into your people view and then you select a person. So uh, let me go ahead here and I'm going to select um, a colleague of mine that I work with. And you'll see that what we get is a whole bunch of new fields that we didn't have before. This includes the ability to add information like birth dates or for family history purposes, death and marriage dates, or any sort of custom label dates that you want to add for important events. You can add multiple phone numbers and you can see that we've got different types here, custom, etc. And, and you can connect all of those. You can add addresses, you can add relationships, and this actually lets you connect it to people with just plain text or write in Mylio. So for example, let me just go down to my myself here for a second. I'll just scroll a little bit. And uh, I'll show you how I've connected a few things here really quick. So here's my card. 
And you'll see that I've connected the relationships I have, my daughter, my mom, my father, my grandmother, my wife, but I haven't connected my son yet. So if I click, what I can do is say, oh, I wanna connect my son. And then just start typing his name and pick him from the people list. And now I've got that connection. Now, you might be wondering why. Well, we're going to show you some cool stuff later, like publishing an interactive family tree. We've got some new photo sharing options. And for those of you who like to connect the dots, this is going to add some really cool stuff in the near future of photo sharing options uh, so that you can create things like family groups and things like that. But we're doing all the under the hood stuff right now, which is um, pretty cool stuff. So right here, you'll see if I go over to my son's card now, let me just scroll up to him, that, you know, his relationships are currently empty. But when I connect later to family search, I can actually get a little bit more interactivity and keep those together. Like you'll also see here a badge for family search, which we'll talk about that platform in just a moment. But I just want you to see how we can create meaningful connections like this of cross-linking in our library so that we know the different relationships of who we have. And I can continue to add grandparents and other folks uh, as I make connections here, and it will begin to actually populate under the hood. Now, what's cool about this is that you can then use it to trigger things. Now, for example, let me go to a picture that has some people in it. And so now if I click on Photo Explorer, you'll see that I can now actually start a chat message or send an email to the person in the picture. Or with just a click, I can switch and see all of that person's pictures and jump right to their view. So Photo Explorer is telling you more about who's in a picture and allowing you as you explore to say things like, oh, you know, I want to make a shift here. And so as we find the best one where they're both smiling, I could just click and then trigger and send a text message right to my wife and attach this photo or pick from her emails and send. Now, I'm not going to leave those up for a long period there because I don't want to share that. That's real person contact info, but uh, don't spam my wife. But as you see there, there's this meaningful connection where we've been able to connect these together and make this trigger point to hand photos off uh, to people or to get more information about a person with just a click and it takes you. So now I'm taking a look at pictures of my son through the years and I was able to make that jump. So you'll find that when you are in the person view, all you have to do is select an individual in person view and you'll see that. If you are in their container, you'll also see it until you select an individual photo. And then what you're doing is looking at information about that photo. Now, because typing all of that in for these connections can seem kind of slow, uh, we make this easier. So you can click choose contact and this will open up an address book. Now we have support for this on Mac OS, iOS and Android, uh, unfortunately, Windows doesn't have a connection that allows Outlook to do what we need, but I'll show you how to do that in just a second, because we don't like anybody having to type unnecessarily. But I can type in and start to search, and then when I find someone's contact information that I need, as I browse, I could just then click on them, and it would sync that information up and connect their card. So that makes it really easy to add those connections. So for example, I'll click here and choose a contact and just type in her name and click. And when I did that, it automatically added in relevant information like email and address and other things. And it put that in with the person very quick and very easy, okay? Now, this information is kept just in your catalog. It's not embedded into each photo. Uh, it will be used when we do cool things like posting to family search, which I'll talk about later, but this is not embedded in every person's photo. This is attached 
to the person record that we have here inside of Mylio Photos. And it won't rename people, but it will add all of that relevant information as you connect it. So in this case, it picked up home address and work address and different emails and phone numbers and all of those things as needed. It picked up my birth date and added that in. So it would pick up all of that relevant information as I make those types of connections. All right. Are there any questions about the info panel for people here? Uh, we refer to this as connections and you have the ability to use the contact card. I did mention as well that you can import a contact card. So in this case, it's just a VCF file. So that's the electronic business card format. So you can see there that I have some. So let me just do that here. Uh, we're not going to be violating Poseidon's privacy here. I'm pretty sure as a Greek god, he's got that covered. He's a little bit public with his identity. But I'll just choose the contact and import from a contact card and, and then navigate to the VCF file or the electronic business card. And uh, I'll just select his contact. In this case, this is what he goes by occasionally. And we'll hit open. And you see it picked up the notes. It grabbed his address, it grabbed his different emails, his phone numbers, and any relevant dates. So you can export VCF cards from any address book program. You can do it from Outlook. You can do it from Google address book, your email programs. Uh, it makes it really easy to sync this data. Okay, cool. Um, I see some questions in Q&A. Uh, is there anything that we need to bring up with the group about this feature, guys, that was asked or that I should answer before we go forward? Yeah, let's, there's a couple here. Um, Jacqueline asks, if I add my son, if I add a son to my son, will Mylia mm -hmm. suggest that I have a grandson? Sure. So we will have that when you connect to the family history tree, which I'll show in a moment with family search. So it'll make those connections and make those suggestions. Um, under the hood, Mylia is not doing all of those connections because it's easy for us to get them wrong, but we're exploring how to make those suggested additions. Um, so that, that is something we're looking to add. So it doesn't do all the cross-referencing until you do the family tree, which I'll show in a moment. Uh, and then that does actually cross-reference and read from your whole family tree. I think that was it. Great. So uh, you can edit a person's name. I saw there was a question for that. So, you know, you just click and you can go in there and, and adjust. So very easy. Um, we have not added multiple name fields. I saw there was a question about that. We're keeping this pretty straightforward. Uh, first name, last name. Uh, we are exploring ways of having more than one person with the same name later. So that's something we'll address. Um, but you can get people added in pretty straightforward that way. Let's go real quickly to the sharing options of that. So if I wanted to share some pictures with my dad, uh, when I have that photo open and I click, I'm going to see everybody who was in that picture who's tagged. Okay. So this helps me see more photos for someone. So this takes out a significant number of steps. So if I want to dig in and let's say I came across this picture in search results, uh, this is 1970s at its finest, by the way, um, I could just click and then pivot right to all of those pictures and see everything from that. So that way, if I was looking at pictures of one person, I can pivot to another. And so as you are exploring, you can pivot and jump right from one person to another person very quickly within those search results or anything else, uh, making it easy for those pivot points, which is great. Uh, additionally, let's say you did a search and um, I'll just throw something somewhat random in here. Let's go Eagle. And it searches, boom, 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 boom. Oh yeah, that time I went and photographed Eagles. Well, you'll notice up here, we have two new buttons here. So we call these quick action buttons. We had Photo Explorer before, but now you have one with just a click and it takes you to that folder. So you could jump right to the folder from a photo and get back to it. Or maybe you have lots of folders and nested folders and everything else, and that's not as useful as you want. So maybe you're on some search results Let's do view all here. 
and I come across something that I want. So I know I have some eagle pictures that are going to come from like a zoo, probably. And then I've got these that were from my trip in Alaska. Well, I don't remember when I went to this trip in Alaska. It was cold. I had brain freeze, but I remember that I went there. So again, as I look at an individual photo, it becomes very easy to also click and pivot to that cold, cold day of March 21st, 2013. Or click the back button there, and now I'm in that week of March. Oh yeah, there's the whole event, Rich in Alaska. Now I'm seeing the whole activity from that trip, okay? So these new pivot points um, make it very easy to jump. Now, if you don't want one of those for some reason, it wouldn't be your Milio if it wasn't your Milio. Uh, under the more menu here, you'll see quick actions. You could decide, do you see show in folder, show in life calendar, or photo explorer? You have the ability, if for some reason you didn't want one of those features, uh, to turn it off pretty easily um, by just clicking that button and you can make that pivot point. Okay, so cool. I'm glad you liked the pivot points, Jason. Yeah. the. That's one of the cool things about Mylio. So now you could pivot by folder, you know, so you just click and you're in that folder. You can pivot by date, uh, or if you're on a picture with a person in it, you can pivot by person, obviously. So let me just clear out the eagles there and uh, we'll just jump up to the top here. Boom. So yeah. So, you know, maybe I wanted to put together pictures with my wife with a click. I could just pivot and see that or we just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. We took a selfie out in front of the tree. I can click a button and message that to her or remember in Photo Explorer. Oh, where were we? I could just click explore that location on the web. And it does a reverse geocode lookup and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. We went to the Hotel Roanoke and we were standing right there out in front of the hotel. And we got it, we took that picture in front of the tree that was a great place to visit let's go back there for our 30th wedding anniversary. So remember photo explorer lets you do cool things like look up details about the picture or where it was taken or any of those things so and we've got more photo explorer actions in the works guys so. Uh, one of the things we're really big about at Milio is letting you use your metadata for something other than the joy of typing. So we try to make metadata be actionable so you can use it to find things and pivot and locate and discover and, and really quickly get organized, right? So when you come across a memory and, you know, you start looking at an old picture and it's like, oh, you know, who's this, you know, and then you start to actually tag and name, right? Like you can go in and sometimes you'll remember, but sometimes Milio will help. But, you know, you could just start getting in there and as you tag photos, you might realize that it's been a while since you've seen pictures of that person, right? And so now with just a pivot, you think you're really quick. This is my Aunt Catherine, I believe. Yep, there we go. Cool. And I think this is him. I'll double check with my mom later. But again you've got those pivot points now. So with just a click, you could jump right to one of those people and go in and see all their pictures that you still need to tag or finish organizing or edit or do extra information with. But those pivot points are a lot of fun. So I hope that that makes sense. Cool. All right, uh, anything in the Q&A guys that you guys wanna share with the rest of the group before we go on to family search integration? Lots of compliments. People are yes, excited people about this. people really like this. Good, yeah. good. Um, well, make sure you pass that on to the guys who worked on this. This is one of those features where we still have more things coming to it, guys, but there's a lot under the hood with the metadata, making this work, making sure it stays private. Um, there was a lot of stuff we wanted to do there. Okay, so let's talk about family search for a moment. You'll see here that I've got an icon. That's the family search icon indicating that this person is connected on my family search tree familysearch.org is a nonprofit organization um, and they create a world history uh, that people can upload family trees and you can import your family tree from other places you could build it from scratch but it's totally free and they allow you to post memories 
to family search about a person. And so the benefit of that is that you can then connect people to your family tree, whether they are living or dead, and it will create meaningful connections. So I'm gonna select my father's father here, who I haven't connected to my tree yet. And I'll click choose family search contact. Now, what it's gonna do the first time is you're gonna to have to log in to family search. So log in with your Facebook, Google, Apple, or um, other account or email and password and connect it. And once you bless it, it will then search through your family tree and show you an alphabetized list of people on your family tree. So in this case here, I'm looking and I have two instances of him. So I need to clean up my family tree a little bit later, but I'm gonna, I think it's this one here and I'll click. And now it picked up his birth date, his death date. If I come down to relationships, it would pick up others. Now let me connect to the other one here really quick instead. Let's try that one. There we go, that was the correct instance. Look, who was his wife? Who was his son and his other son? And here I am as his grandson. So it actually picked up all those relationships, right? And if you go to edit these, you'll see that they're there and you can edit them, right? Son, there it is, Tom Harrington. And you can have that as plain text or you can actually create the real connection to the Milio person right there as well. So now you can actually create those actual connections. So if I were to go to Tom Harrington, my uncle, and let me just navigate down here, past the stormtrooper. I put those things in for your enjoyment, guys, just so we're clear, you know, because stormtroopers belong in everyone's library. Uh, but there's my uncle Tom. And now he has a family search badge because it properly connected him. So it found him on the family tree. So once I made one connection, it started making other connections in my tree, which is really cool. So now let's say I wanna post a photo of my Uncle Tom. He recently passed and I'd like to add some pictures uh, to family search for him. I can select those pictures and decide which ones I wanna post. I'm gonna turn off the zoom to face option here so I can see the whole picture. And from the share menu, I can choose uh, oh, sorry, from the info panel menu here, that's right, I can go in and I can start to publish these. So I'll just take a look. Let me go in. Yep. There we go. Family search. I'm having one of those days, guys. Is that a single photo? I can't remember. Oh, I know why. <laughs> uh, make sure family history is on. And then help me out, Angela. Why is it hiding on me? Don't Sorry, you have to click on the question. Container? What are we looking for? The publish the family search button. Um, you have to click on the container, right? It should be at the top of the family history section. Okay, no problem. It there it is. Post memory to family search. Thank yeah. you. Post memory to family search. There we go. And if I select more than one, I can do more than one at a time. So you can batch upload. That's what I was trying to do. Uh, make sure you have the family history section turned on. If you don't, you won't see that feature. So if you're not into family history, don't use the family history feature. But even if you're just an amateur or budding, this is a great way to create a permanent record that gets handed off to other family members. And the cool thing about family search is it's totally free on that site. So I'll click post memories to family search. I've got these two picked. It automatically picked up the caption uh, from Milio. If I don't have a caption, I could add information. Um, Right. And so I can actually add those details in and then click post. It will connect in the background and just like anything else, you can see that it's uploading. Right. So there it did the post. Now, here's the thing. The family search website is like a museum. It's actually curated by real human beings. So they review pictures before they go live to make sure that they are 
uh, appropriate so that people aren't just spamming or putting junk up there that doesn't belong on a family history website. So when you upload, it could take just a couple of minutes before it shows up because it has to go through a, a real person review. But when I go in here and I go to my family tree, you're gonna see all the people in the tree and you can start to make connections and additions. So here is my grandfather, John Harrington, right? And if I go into him there, you know, I could start to see it uh, and I could actually expand it. And now I'm seeing, you know, their relations above. Or if I click here on my father, for example, I can see other relationships. So if you click, you can see spouses and other things. And so I have some things I need to clean up, but it allows you to actually build out that family tree. And what's cool about that is that once you start to make posts, then you actually start to get memories up here. So you'll see that it says memories, memories one. So I've posted one photo there. And with just a click there, that's the one that's being reviewed, see? So even though I posted this memory, because this memory had me in it and my mom and my uncle and my father, it's gonna actually show up and be on the family tree for each person, which is pretty cool. So I hope you guys check Family Search out. They've got a great website with tons of information. They've got actual physical buildings, like 500 of them around the world, where you can do research about your family for free, uh, like these historical libraries. It's a really cool group, and uh, you could dig in. And if you guys are going to be at Roots Tech, which is their big conference coming up at the end of February, uh, we'll be there showing off some of this stuff. But you can do some pretty cool stuff and, and start to build and connect your family tree. And again, as you start to do post, you can see that those memories will get connected. So there's that picture being reviewed and connected. Does that make sense to everyone? And I don't know if you guys are using Family Search, but or if you do have a family tree, uh, you can also import your family tree from other platforms uh, and connect it very easily. Okay. Any questions about that Family Search integration? Oh yeah, uh, and John, this works everywhere. They're, they've got they've got libraries and people around the world, so you could do research all over the world. I've got relatives from the UK. You can go into their online tools and research. Uh, it is completely a global website with a global database of information about families. And as you go in, you'll also see that it starts to attach records and stuff. So like you could find things like birth certificates. Here I found the divorce index. So it'll actually add that date to my father of when my parents split, but it'll have that date in people view in my Leo in case I need to be aware of it. Okay. So it'll take those records and sync everything up. So you have a very rich family history tree and my Leo supports all of that. So you can connect uh, all sorts of things here. Now, remember you can connect people, you can connect all their contact detail, information. Uh, later, we'll be making more of these clickable. So you take out your phone and you forgot where something was, you'll be able to look up their address right from your phone and get driving directions. Uh, and as you can see here, we've already turned on some photo sharing options. Uh, we'll be adding more options like make a phone call, start a group text with everybody who's in the picture. So these are some of the ones we have in the works here. So this is the start of a new feature. And uh, we've got a bunch of cool other stuff coming down the pike uh, to really fill that in and, and let you do more with it. Okay. Um, any questions, guys, that we should cover? Uh, David's asking, is all of this available in the free version? Um, family search is free. Uh, contacts is free. Um, yeah, I don't think we shared anything yet that requires the paid version. So we try right. to be generous. Uh, we're going to show shared albums in a moment, which require a paid version and uh, frame IO, which requires that you have a paid account with Adobe, not us. Um, but yeah, all this is in our free version. So you can encourage family members to start tagging and organizing photos and start uploading pictures as well. Uh, and soon we'll have some other family history integrations. Like we'll have the ability to back up your pictures from family search coming and we're connecting. They got a giant database of historical location information. So we'll be adding stuff like that, but this just makes it really simple to share memories, which is important. And remember it's super simple to pivot. 
And when you pivot, you can also tell if you've connected a person to Family Search, you'll see the Family Search badge uh, on their contact card in the grid. Cool. Any other things to bring up before we go forward? Nope. I think I think that's it for this. Cool. People are excited about the the new integrations, though. Great, great. So. Um, John's question about work and other relationships, you can do that now. So if you go to relationships, you'll see that we have things like assistant, manager, coworker. So, and if you had that in the address book, it brings it in as well. So you can absolutely do that. Now, do we have a tree? No, we don't draw an organizational chart for you, but you can see who your coworker is or who someone's boss is or any of those sorts of things. Or uh, you know, my wife insists that I have her in my address book as goddess of my world. That's her job title in my address book, but you could add that as a custom one. So if you need to add custom, you just click it and you can add a custom relationship. So spell out whatever you need, but we did follow the virtual business card format. So we picked up all of the standard fields uh, that are VCF standards. So that includes these key relationships, right? friend, wife, spouse, husband, et cetera, grandparents, grandchild. There's not things like aunt and uncle, but you would just make custom. So we just picked the ones that were standard, uh, but you can add as many as you want. So hopefully that gives you the flexibility uh, that you guys need for this feature. So if you need to label somebody, you can. Um, down the road, we will be adding groups to the people container, but that's further down the roadmap for hopefully later this year. So you'll be able to kind of like how we have albums for photos, have albums with different people in it. So you can make a group for your bowling team, your scout troop, your immediate family. And that'll also connect with some of our photo sharing features that we have in the works. So that's a glimpse into the future. So we are actively thinking and working on that, but please put comments in into the chat or onto the forum. Let us know what you guys are thinking, but I hope you like where we're going with this. We're really trying to make this be uh, the collection of everything that matters to you for your life so that you can keep it all connected and, and really work with what you got. Okay, cool. Then let's go forward. So we talked about the pivot points. We talked about the photo explorer. Um, here's one. So we realized that um, sharing photos was hard. Um, not impossible, but hard. And doing it from a mobile device was really kind of hard, especially if you don't have something like mail drop from Apple that makes it convenient to attach a bunch of pictures. Now, this does require a Mylio Photos Plus account. And currently, it works with our optimized image quality size, which is a five by seven inch print, 300 PPI, perfect for making a basic print, posting online, digital frames, et cetera. This isn't for full quality files. Now, I know some of you want that. We are working on that. That will be a paid feature where you'll have the option to have some additional storage in the future uh, that you can have a sharing bucket for sharing high quality uncompressed files, but that's something that we're working on for later this year. But we did recently release shared albums, and now we've made an improvement to them that I think you guys are going to like. So in the past, in case you didn't know about it, you always had the ability since our last update, version 24, to go to albums and pick an album of pictures you wanted to share. So I'll come here. I've got these photos from the Experience Music Project in Seattle, which is this great pop culture museum. And, uh, you know, we've got Nirvana's one of their early tapes, some great sci-fi issues, uh, some cool stuff, right? And I want to post this and, and share about this visit I had. Well, I have the ability to select that and click the share menu. And now I could say get shareable link. Or if you had this selected before, you would click here to create a shared album. And, you know, that was fine. You agreed to the terms of service, you hit continue, you chose a theme or a style, uh, you can make adjustments. Uh, we also have an update in the works that if you leave metadata in the images, that metadata can be toggled on or off on the album. If you don't want that metadata being visible to people, then you can decide what metadata is turned off or globally disable it with SafeShare. Um, and we also have watermarks, which we'll talk about more in just a second. 
So when you're ready, you hit share and that was great. And you know, it would produce a web album for you that you could see and view and, and look at and download images from, et cetera. Well, that's great when you've already organized images and you've taken the time to build an album, but it's not great when you're in a hurry. And so we took some feedback and, and let me do this from a phone because it actually works really well from a phone, but it also works from desktop as well. But let me just uh, share my phone here and share my screen. Hopefully this will work. Phone's plugged in. Perfect, there's Milio. So you can now be viewing, right? So let's say uh, I wanted to get some of those pictures to my wife from that weekend that we just, we just had a great visit. So as I said, we went and we celebrated and I think this one looks great. So I'll just long press on the phone to select. And we've got our glasses from our wedding, something random on my camera roll. She really liked this Christmas tree. This one was more my speed. And that's a great laugh for smiling. And that's good. So now I'll just tap the share menu. Well, you'll notice that we've now added three more options on the mobile device. So you had share before, but we now have the ability to actually break this out a little bit more. And you could post a family search like we talked about earlier. So I could post that, those pictures to my wife and mine record about our 25th wedding anniversary, which I will do later because that's thoughtful. But I just wanna send this to her. So I'll tap get shareable link. It quickly makes an album based on the current date and timestamp. You are free to change that name if you want. So I could say, you know, 25th anniversary. Hopefully I spell it correctly, there we go. Click continue. Agree that you want to publish the picture and that you have the rights, that they're your photos. We legally have to ask you that each time. We don't write copyright law, we just have to follow it, guys. So sorry you have to click that each time, but them's the rules. Click continue, and then you can decide. Now, I'm not gonna watermark these, but we'll talk about that feature in a moment. But I am gonna put safe share up because my wife does not like having personal details on the internet. So this will strip out all the metadata from the photos. And I could choose a theme, click share, and it goes ahead and shares the images. And when it's done, it will put the link right on my clipboard so that it's ready for sharing. So I can switch to another application. I could put it into a text message. I can post this to Facebook as a link. I can email it to her, uh, but it will do that share. Now, when you're doing this, it uh, is doing a lot in the background. It's generating the images, making the web page, but it's putting it up there and I'll let that finish up. So, let me go ahead here and you can actually close this dialog box, by the way, and you can keep working. So when it's done, you'll get a notification in the app. So you can go and set up another one. You can navigate later when you want to actually see the images that you've created. Uh, all you have to do is navigate over to your album view. OK, so let me just hit done here and I'll go to albums for a second. And you'll see that anything that you've quick shared will be up there under the quick share menu, right? So there's the 25th wedding anniversary. It says it's live. I have these other ones that I quickly shared, right? And so, oh yeah, there's the ones there from my trip to England when I visited that museum. Here's the ones for my wife. Cool, it's published, right? And if you just go to the info for that, or you go up to your notifications, you'll actually see that there should be a notification there. Well, it'll be there in a second, but it's all in there. Or from the info panel, there's your link, okay? And so you'll be able to copy the link, share the link, et cetera. So that one's still generating, but let me go to one that is live. And so there's the link. And so I can copy that to my clipboard, or I could tap to open it, and there I am, right? And so if I wanted to share those photos with a colleague who went with me on the trip, I love this. This museum had this awesome photo of the selfie. They made a classic bust of a selfie for future times to preserve this, but in the style of an old uh, Roman one. And if I tap, 
I could then, of course, airdrop that or share that or text message the link to this album. So we've really fast tracked the ability for you to generate these and uh, produce these from your device. So let me go ahead and switch back. But that's the shareable link option. And it basically cuts out a ton of steps from producing an album to share. You could just choose what you want from any view. You could be in search view, for example, and you know, search for something. And there it is, Colleen and Eagle. And I can now, by the way, select multiple files here. And with those files selected, I can also trigger get shareable link or use the system clipboard or any of the export options or any of these other choices. So now you can actually multi-select in your search results, either shift click for everything or command click and actually trigger any of the sharing options. So if you needed to put a shareable link together, you could, or you know, maybe my daughter just wanted these to show her friend. This was from a recent Eagle Scout project, boom. And I could just go ahead and you know, trigger that and attach them and send them to a message. So I hope you guys like that ability to both search for things and share, as well as the shareable link option, which I think is pretty cool. Now, the shareable link does require you to have a Mylia Photos Plus account, but you can try it out by invoking the trial for free uh, and get 30 days access if you want to give that a test drive. Cool. What sort of questions do we have? Um, Rob asks about the sort options for shared albums and yep. so forth. I know that we had some... Um, a bug that was causing things to not go in the order that you had set up in your album. Do we know if that got fixed for this release? Uh, that's not in this release, but that's in the bug fix sprint, which is being worked on right now. So hopefully it'll be shipping in a couple of weeks. Awesome. So it, it's supposed to be the order that you sort them will be the order that it is. So if you put it into custom and you drag them into your own order, that's fine. If you sort it by date or by name, um, that's coming. So we understand people want that. We've definitely heard that it's being worked on and it will ship soon. And what about sharing videos with, um, shared albums and things like that? Is that something we're working on or? Nope. Nope. <laughs> right, the, uh, so, and, and, and here's what I'll tell you. So there's really only two viable consumer options out there for sharing video. One is called Vimeo and they charge you $79 a year and the other is called YouTube and they uh, thrash and pillage and take all of your information and put ads all over it. Serving up video is incredibly expensive and there's really only two consumer sites out there for a reason. One makes you the product and uh, serves ads and takes all sorts of metadata and information about you that you may or may not be comfortable as well as actually takes rights to repurpose, reuse and resell your videos as much as they want for any purpose whatsoever, that would be the option called YouTube. And if you don't want that, then you have to pay $99 a year and that's called Vimeo. So uh, at this point in time, the answer is no, because we would have to be charging you quite a bit of money for that. And that's why we haven't done it is it would effectively double the cost of our platform at least if not more. So we would suggest you look at some of those options. All right, Joe asked, does the receiver of a shared, ne shared link need to be a Mylio client? Nope viewable in any web browser you can decide whether or not you want to include a download button and that download button will have those high quality jpegs attached not original quality but nice high quality uh, shareable version that's print ready or ready for posting or sharing and you do have the ability to decide if they're watermarked or not so if you're making this for maybe review and you want to put your branded logo on it or you want to denote that these are copyrighted uh, you can do that with watermarks and i'll talk about the new watermark options here in, in just a moment all right, one more question from Harold. How long is a shared album link live? Uh, as long as you have it published. So we don't have them expiring, um, but you can go to any shared album after the fact, navigate to any of the ones that have the globe or your quick shares folder and click on it and choose to um, stop sharing. And that will take the link down. Now, if the user has it cached, uh, it'll take a little bit of time. And also the way our servers work, uh, it takes about 15 minutes when you hit publish uh, for the changes to refresh on the server and people's cache. Uh, we're shortening that cache time a little bit, so it'll check more frequently. But generally speaking, if you hit publish, 
Uh, usually your browser checks the previously cached version. So if you're frequently hitting publish, 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 or you're making tweaks, try using an incognito window to check it rather than the one that you already have cached on your device. We cache for performance so that they load quicker. Uh, so, but if you do make changes, you just need to go back. So, and here I could just again, click and I'm there. I'll see the images. This one, I didn't make a downloadable archive. Um, and very soon, uh, we'll have a metadata viewer on here that you can decide if you want metadata to be shown with the images. That's something that uh, the web developer team is almost done right now. And you can launch slideshows from these. If the picture needs to be rotated, the user can fix it. So if you're in a hurry, uh, you have a great full screen view. That's just like a great slideshow where you can step through with a little navigator on the bottom there. So it's very clean and fast. And uh, if you allow downloads, then the user can download the individual images or have a download archive. Obviously, we really can't prevent people from right clicking or screen capturing. We didn't even bother trying, but we do make it easier if you want to have a downloadable archive to do so. Each album is independent. So when you share it, you're not sharing your entire photo collection or access to all your albums. Uh, every album is going to be independent. And uh, if there's ever an issue, people can report it. And so we do all the proper things about, you know, if there's inappropriate use of pictures on the web, we try to do the right thing. Okay. One cool. more quick question from Harold. Uh, is the album online or is it a link to the album on my vault? The album is online. So that is, so yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not your machine to another machine sharing. That's not what we're doing. So it's yeah, a gallery. One thing to note is it's like a, an unlisted phone number. It's a non-indexed web page, so it's semi-private. It's it, people who you give that link to will have access, but it's not like it's going to end up on the major search engines. Yeah, it's set to no index. Uh, the pages are gobbledygook. There's no interconnections between them, so it's a it's an incredibly like I think it's a 64 character hash URL with a bunch of random characters. So no one's going to accidentally discover it by typing in your name or Milio photos in your name. So they're, they're, we tried to strike the balance between easy enough that when you send it to your great grandmother, she can open it and see it and secure enough that it's not casual. But again, if you don't want something on the internet, don't put it on the internet. That's pretty much the rule. But this is the uh, we call it semi-private. It's the most private way to share without introducing all sorts of hurdles with passcodes and other things that just basically get in the way. All right, one more question here from Jason. Instead of building all the backend complexity to support video streaming, what about simply showing a thumbnail in the web album and allowing users to download and play it locally for video? Uh, again, we're not gonna we're not gonna host those video files. That's still gonna drive up your cost immensely, and we'd have to charge you for that. So we will be adding account to account transfer. It's something we are working on. And if you need to transfer files from one user to another, we have something that we are working on for future release, and that will allow you to transfer full quality files. Uh, but that'll be a paid add on to your Milio plan. So we are aware that people want that. Uh, shared albums are not that. Shared albums are for viewing and enjoying um, and sharing of photos. If you need to transfer files from one user to another, we will be having a work, we'll be having a solution for that later, just fine. Okay. All right. And John asks, assuming Miley is hosting the photos, is there an accumulated size upper limit to all shared photos? Do we have a uh, we are using the optimized image size, which is a five by seven, 300 PPI. It's about 2,000 pixels capped. And Did Laurie I says, can the you add, yep, I think so. And Lori says, can you add photos to a live shared album? So you have to republish it. You add them to the album and then you republish. Yep. Once it's live, you just hit the republish button and it will update. And if you need to, as the, I see a question there from Susan, you know, so let's say I, I do a search for peacocks and I, I hit, I get nothing. Let's try peacock. And I think I have some peacocks, but maybe they're not smart tagged. Let's see. There we go. Peacock. So 77 of them. So let's just say I go, okay, that's a good one. That one, that one. Remember, you can um, actually adjust your thumbnail sizes here. So you can see a little bit more data as you kind of go through your search results if you don't want to have to go in. And so you can choose what you want. Uh, for those of you on this call who shoot birds professionally, I don't. 
So, but that doesn't mean that I'm not attracted to some of them. Uh, so there we go. So like, let's say I did some search results and I'm ready to share those. Boom, get shareable link and uh, Peacocks. Continue. Choose what you want and share and it will go. Okay. Cool. There's my link. Click a button. There's the images. Does that work? Did that, did that address the question? I think it did. I think so. So the goal here is to make it much faster to go from search or browse to sharing. And uh, I hope you guys like that. And we've got some other improvements coming, but I understand what you're asking for, for transferring high quality files or video. Uh, when we do turn on um, account, um, account to account transfer, um, that is something we are working on. Uh, it'll be a paid add-on. Um, you can decide how much transfer space you want and you'll be able to transfer full quality files, full quality video. The recipient will have to have Mylio, but they can have a free version of Mylio to receive it. But you could then, you'll then be able to directly invite them and transfer it seamlessly from one person to another person directly uh, without putting it on a broad site where other people could share it or access it. So that's something we're working on for later, okay? And yes, John, uh, shared albums require a Mylio Photos Plus account, okay? Do you recommend creating a separate account to share family history photos and collaborate? Um, it's up to you, Robert. Um, we, maybe somebody could put into the link the concept of spaces. Um, we have a great course on spaces. You can absolutely create a space. And this is not new to this webinar, but you can make a space like I made a space called Family History Project. And in that space, you can decide what people are allowed to do. So I can edit that. And I could say that it has its own passcode. I can log in other devices so I can have maybe my father log in. And when he logs in, he only has access to the quick collection of family history photos. So everything that I categorize as family history, that's all he can see. And I give him the ability to see certain tools, but not delete files, for example. And I give him certain restrictions, like he can add things and modify things, but not delete. So you can actually log in other devices and assign spaces to those devices if you want to collaborate. So if you do want to use one Mylio account for that, you can, or some people will just set up a single family account for like a family history project. Um, we will be shipping later this spring the ability to have more than one Mylio account installed on your computer so you can switch between accounts very easily and bounce between photo libraries. So that's something that we'll be adding support for. So you can have multiple Mylios if you want to use it that way. And uh, you can then set rules so that like everybody else who's accessing it can't delete files, for example. And so that's all part of spaces. We have a great video course that walks you through how to set those up. And um, we did add a little bit to spaces in a recent update. We have some educational messages here so people understand what's going on. And with just a click, you'll get to the manual. And uh, Lori, I think you've got a video series here and, and um, you guys could add the links and stuff, but there's a lot of great education on how to use it. Cool. All right, did we answer all the questions? There's one more there. Uh, Walter's asking, is it possible to create and share albums that have sub albums? So they're not nested. You can publish sub albums. So if you publish from the top level, the sub album should be included um, we're exploring what to do with sub albums in the future. We're thinking about creating navigation, but we haven't yet. But you can select a top level and publish it, and it does grab the sub album, right, Laura? right, Angela? You know, I haven't tested that myself. I, that was part of why I asked. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. <laughs> cool. So a sub album is just an album that has other albums inside of it. So, Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, next. This next feature is a little bit professional um, and it won't be of use to many of you, but it is going to be useful to some of you. So I'll just cover it really quickly. 
So we've added a feature before that works with the Frame.io service. This is a collaboration service that's part of Adobe that's used for both photo and video professionals or those collaborating. So previously, we added the ability, if you were collaborating with the service, to add in an import from a Frame.io project. You'd log in to your account, and then you would be prompted just to authorize, and then you'd be able to see things that were shared with you. So for example, uh, if I had, you know, if I was collaborating with the Chicago Bulls here on a project, I could see that and go in and actually browse and see things. Or I can go down here to my account and, you know, I can see different projects. And so, you know, recently I was, uh, you know, we got Imaging USA coming up. I'd see things there or I was at Adobe Max, uh, you know, so I participated in this presentation here that I gave and somebody shared back the pictures with me. So if I just choose that, I can actually browse and see all of these things shared with me, or I can have my own account and projects within that. So this is part of Frame.io, which is included, a lightweight version is included with regular Creative Cloud memberships. You can go to Adobe's website to find out more about it, um, but you could then import projects or publish projects. Uh, and so you would just click, and when you did, it would say, okay, where are you going to put it? And you choose a destination, decide whether or not duplicates come in, does it keep the file names, does it keep the folder organization, and when you click copy, uh, it then connects and starts to download. So in this case, and this wasn't new, I'm just laying the groundwork here. Um, so here it is, there's that project folder and it had a video clip in it so there was a video that was shared with me for collaboration and other changes and i picked it up and added it to my library uh, i've had full projects and photographers share files this way but let's say i needed to put something back for the video editor or the person i was collaborating with so what i can do is just kind of search and i found scuba right and okay i need to share a couple of pictures here right and then i'll click and say that i want to post those okay so if i open one of these up i can now choose to publish a frame io version and i can decide if my milio edits go with it again you just have to log into your account And once you're logged in, you can actually publish edits or changes. So you can go back into the project where you're collaborating with other people and select. Decide what you're uploading, unmodified original, any quality, the, the full specs, everything you have. Set it all in there, right? Assign the color space, it's all professional. The bit depth, et cetera. And hit publish and it will actually upload that into the project. And then later, if I make a version of this where I change it, it'll actually stack it with the original. Or if you downloaded a bunch of pictures from Frame.io, made edits, and then put them back up, it'll actually stack them and group them with the original folder for you. So this option makes it really easy for you to collaborate with others. Now, I'm not gonna go any more into this because this is obviously for a small group of people, but it is one of our more professional features and it works with the Frame.io service, which is part of Creative Cloud and they have additional options uh, for those of you that are Adobe users, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. All right, uh, we talked about the quick share menu. Um, okay, we have made it easier to set up a vault, okay? So under the devices panel now, you'll see a dedicated button for add vault. When you click it, it's going to walk you through everything you need to add a vault. So you see here on my system, I've got one, two. This vault has got 19,000 images left, so it'll be done syncing later today. This one's much slower. I've set up an S3 instance on my NAS. It's got a transfer. It takes a little bit longer. But here's one of my Seagate vaults. And you know, in the past, technically you could select almost any device and make it a vault if you wanted to. Remember, a vault just means it has 
a copy of everything in your library at full quality with all the metadata. And it has a backup version of your catalog in case you have any corruption or anything bad happens on your device or you were to lose a device. So by having a vault, it means that all the pictures on my Android phone, my iPhone, my iPad, my laptop, my desktop, my Windows computer are all backed up to one central place. That's a vault. And it's not backup if you only have one. So we encourage you to have more than one. Now, JC, Angela, Lori all have tons of articles and videos, and there's great documentation on this, but we discovered that lots of people got confused when they had to set one up. So we've made it easier. So you click Add Vault. You'll need to be on trial or have a Mylia Photos Plus plan to have backup. Click Continue, and it will analyze the size of your photo library and suggest a size for your vault. This is also a great way just to know about how big your photo library is. It's an easy way to get a calculation and it will calculate the size of your library. We then give you a recommended disk size to have room. We don't enforce it, but we just suggest that this will give you some room for expansion. You click continue. Now, if you wanted to pay an arm and a leg, you could choose and connect a cloud service. That's fine. Or you can choose external drive. Now it's going to scan your system for hard drives that are big enough. If you try to choose a drive that's too small, it'll let you know that that drive can't be used. Otherwise, it will recommend a drive you have connected. So in this case, I have a 98 terabyte RAID. I'm not going to make it a vault, but I could. If you need a hard drive, just click a button here. And we've set up a web page where we have recommendations on hard drives and the available sizes. You can get right to buying those if you need to. Or if you need a travel drive, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, we tell you how to get an SSD, which works great for that. If you have a smaller photo library below four terabytes, then you can use one of these SSDs as well. And we have videos here all about setting up your vault and what you need to know uh, about it. But you just pick a drive and hit continue, and then it will add that device and set it up as a vault. So it's super streamlined. It guides you through every step of the way and will help you get to that state where you end up having multiple copies of your photos backed up automatically. And remember, this just runs in the background. When Mylio Photos on a computer, when you launch your computer, Mylio Photos by default is running in the background. And so it'll sync and back up even if you don't have the application in the foreground. Uh, so that's on computers. And if you don't want that for some reason, I don't know why you wouldn't want it, you can go under settings and under general, uh, you can turn off the background launch option, um, but that's what runs in the background so that Mylio Photos is running in the background for you automatically so that your pictures are backing up and your vaults are kept in sync. Okay, does that make sense on vaults? And um, we didn't change the fact that you still can manually select a device, go to device sync policies and pick vault from the preset list. But we, again, just tried to make this easier and a more guided process for getting set up. Any questions? Nope, I think that one was pretty self-explanatory. Great. By the way, I suggest you plug in an SSD and add it, and then you could add a preset uh, for yourself. And we have one called Travel Drive, um, and it's really simple. Um, or you can choose, you can actually not travel drive. What you would choose is a preset called recent photos, and it will automatically back up your 90 days, or you can come in here. There we go. Travel backup. That's the name of the preset, right? Angela travel backup. Yep. That's the one. Okay. So when you pick that, it automatically puts the most recent three months photos and video on the disc, and it keeps everything else at optimized quality. So all your recent pictures are ready to go. So I can just grab and go and take this with me when I get on the airplane tomorrow and I'll have all my recent photos plus my whole library. And since it's on an SSD with USB-C, I can plug that into an iPhone, an iPad, a laptop, Mac, Windows. You can use it as a drive, it works. Uh, you can see the files on Android, but they don't have a mechanism that we can connect Milio to it yet, but we're trying to get that in place for Android as well. Um, but you, of course, can always customize these. So I went in and added a couple of other quick collections, and you can come in and say, oh, I want all my four and five star pictures on there. 
So I just made my own preset called Travel Drive. And on it, I said, I want everything it optimized. I want everything I marked as a pick, everything that I made four and five stars, everything for the last three months. And then I made a collection called Essential Expanded in Family History. Remember, quick collections are just that. You can just go to all photos view or folder view, open this up and just start clicking on folder pills. Hey, I want all those photos from the inbox. I want these pictures. I want scans. And then you just save that as a quick collection. Now you have lots of details about this, but the benefits of those quick collections is they're like save searches. So my travel drive has basically everything I need all my four star and five star photos, all my picks, everything that I denoted as best. It has everything that's recent that I still need to organize and everything that's there and it's on a fast SSD. So as soon as I plug that drive into any device on my network, it'll start syncing and then I can just grab it and go when I get on the airplane tomorrow. So we have a detailed article in our forum about how to set one of those up. Uh, I posted that a couple of weeks ago, but that's a great use of those SSDs. And uh, that's not new to this release, but it's new-ish, and I wanted to make sure we pointed that out. Okay, um, watermarks. So it's taken us a while, um, but I am proud to say we finally support watermarks. So you can have your watermarks added to images. So maybe you want to share some work photos, right? Or maybe you wanna put your signature on these. You can select a group of images that you want to share and choose the ones you want. And this will work with shared albums. This will work with exports. And when you get in here, let me just do a smaller group of these here. I'll say export. And as long as you're making a new file, you'll see the option here for watermark and we added image watermarks. So now you can choose an image. You have to browse to a folder in Mylio. I suggest you put all your watermarks in one folder so they're easy to find. And you can pick any logo that's a JPEG or a PNG. If you choose a PNG, the PNGs can support transparency. Now they're gonna look a little weird in the browser here, so don't mind the browser. It actually does have transparency. We're trying to figure out how to make that work better here. But there we go. And I hit choose. Decide where it goes. How big is it? What corner does it go in? Is there any padding? What's the opacity of the logo if you want it slightly see-through? There we go. Cool. And decide where to put them. Save the files. And Mylio will go to town on your exports and will add the graphic watermark. Now, I really suggest that, again, put all your watermarks in one folder so they're easy to find. Um, if you guys got the recent bundle we did with ViewBug, uh, they have a great thing up there where you can go and uh, they'll make a signature watermark for you as part of your premium plan. Or if not, uh, they have them for sale pretty affordably. So you get like a nice signature watermark. Uh, and then you can use that to add it to your photos. So, you know, if you want to watermark uh, some of your pictures, so for example, let me just go in here and maybe I want to share a couple of pictures, but with a signature watermark, I can choose a handful of photos that I want to post. There we go. Hit export. And go down there to my watermark and just browse and then you can find if you had like a signature folder for example you might have your signatures in there uh, you can navigate so you know again if it has a png then it supports transparency otherwise you can decide what you need maybe uh, you need to brand this with an organization you can have pngs or logos for companies the sports team logo it's really up to you whatever you want uh, can be in there and then you can select it and then actually add it right there. So pretty simple. Let me just pick one more here. 
you know, and there I can add the logo and it would put it right on the image. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? So we hope that that's a nice addition. There's details in the product manual about how to do watermarks in general. And I know Angela, when we ship this release, will be hitting the button to take the new version of the manual live. Um, but there'll be instructions in there on how to use that as well. And watermarks are in the free version. Yep, watermarks are free. Cool. Other questions related to watermarks? It would be good to have a preview of the watermark looks to adjust settings. We agree, it's just not done. <laughs> so so um, let me share something about software. With software, there's always a list of things that would be great to have. And then there's a list of things you have to have. And then there's a list of things that would be nice to have. So right now we're trying to prioritize all those things. And so, you know, we're working on everything from performance to, you know, giant new features to things like that. Like, yeah, I agree. Our watermark tool could be better, but it works more. And now it does logos and it can do graphics or any sort of uh, branding that you want. But uh, we will eventually improve our watermark tool. I just know that the list of things to do before that is much larger. So, um, you know, I'm not going to tell you that it's the world's best watermark tool, but I'll tell you it's functional. Uh, and there are those images I exported earlier. Now, you know, in this case, doing a preview would have been a good idea because it was too big of a logo. So obviously I'd have to adjust. So you can go in and tweak the size and everything else. So you can just go right back to where you were and overwrite. Uh, so, you know, thank you for clearly illustrating the point of why do one first before you do all. But uh, that would allow you to, to set something up. So in this case, if I want to go back and just reselect those and do an export, I'll just tweak the watermark settings slightly. Let me go with the bug version this time. There we go. And I'm going to go a little smaller. I'll say about 10% the size. A little bit of margin, that's great. And I'm going to say when there's a duplicate file, go ahead and overwrite the old file because the watermarks weren't good. So now I'll click export, hit the same destination and it will blow away the old files and put new ones in there with the revised watermark. It's almost as if we planned that. <laughs> so, so there they are, and there's my new watermark in the corner. Okay, make sense? So you can do these for logos and things like that very nicely now. If you want transparency, it needs to be a, be, be a PNG file. Uh, otherwise, any JPEG's fine if you don't need the transparency. Okay, we talked about graphical watermark setup. Uh, I mentioned that the right panel's been cleaned up. This next list is really short. So um, we do a better job when you are um, renaming files with the batch rename command. Uh, we have improved geotag data for Android. Um, we handle reject flag counting a little bit better. Uh, when publishing or sharing files, the current sort order is now respected. Okay, we did fix it, Angela. <laughs> so, awesome. So, That'll make a lot yeah. of people very happy. <laughs> yes. I, that, was, that was a last minute, got it done on time. It was a should ship as opposed to a must ship. It was going to become a must ship if it didn't make it, but it made it. So I'm glad to hear that. Well done, um, We fixed some stuff with uh, date ranges, uh, scroll positions um a bunch of little things we'll we'll post a list uh jc anything on that list you know that you get a lot of support questions on that we should mention for the smaller bug fixes we've removed amazon drive fully amazon drive is not supported by amazon anymore uh so you won't see it in mylio anymore because you can't access it um and for the 10 of you out there using it uh we don't have microsoft duo support anymore Anything you want to mention, JC, on that list? Yeah, the the uh, we fix GPS on certain Android phones. That's one that we hear quite a yep. bit. Where some photos were not including GPS data on Android devices. That is a big fix in this version. Um, also, the issue with renaming files that were in a sequence. Yep. And um, we have turned auto tag off by default, which was causing some issues for some people that were particularly very specific about their face recognition needs. Yeah. 
turning that off is is great for people that are uh, I don't want to use the word picky. I want to use the word uh, specific. So uh, auto tags were useful if you were wanting to avoid having to confirm faces. But the problem was is that it didn't actually update the metadata of the file. So searches didn't work with auto tag faces, nor did quick filters, nor did it include the information when you posted to other websites like Family Search with the face tag. So the best thing to do is we still you know can help you auto tag your photos just go to the tools menu and launch batch tagging and it will periodically scan and find pictures that aren't tagged and ask you to confirm if it is that person right and you could turn zoom to face on if you need to have it punch right in yes that's right you know if you go to a people container uh, and there's pictures that are suggested for a person um, you will see on the people container a question mark uh, if there are pictures that it wants you to, to look at. So you can still deal with that if you need to use auto tags, but for most people, we suggest turning it off and instead using the batch tagging ability, or if you see that there's a number sign on up here at, with a asking you to confirm, you can go in and confirm people that it's got suggestions for you. Okay. All right, a couple of questions in the chat. Um, Lori is asking about DNG files. She has several that won't display even when converted in a variety of different versions. Do we have any mm -hmm. update on that? Uh, so we do support most DNGs. Uh, Adobe recently made a change in Lightroom that they're now using JPEG XL compression, which throws away about 90% of your quality of the image for you without even giving you a choice. Uh, we'll support that, but we don't support it yet. So we're working on that. That's a pretty sizable lift. It's not part of the DNG spec, which one would think that since Adobe actually wrote the DNG spec, they'd follow it. But Adobe decided to save money on their cloud serving bills by compressing 90% of your image quality now when you make a DNG and using JPEG XL compression. Now, JPEG XL compression is great, but they are deciding to throw away 90% of your image quality. So uh, we don't support that format of DNG. Most other DNG formats we do support. DNG though is just a container. It's not a file format per se. So DNGs can have lots of other things added onto them. So there are certain mobile apps that we don't support the DNGs for or certain camera models that we might not fully support. Um, there are a couple of bugs here and there, but for the most part, it works. And I just, had to deal with this the other day. So I had some file formats that were older file formats. That was a really old digital camera. Um, it was actually, let me just go here into quick filters. It was a really old Leica camera. Uh, and let's see here if I could find it. Leica. It was the Leica Deluxe. Here we go. So I'll just go by manufacturer because this is the only Leica that I owned. Poor man. Uh, and it looks like I already converted them all, but uh, you'd be able to go in and find those, or you could search by file type here uh, in this list. And so if you found some images that were not properly uh, supported, you could then convert those. Um, and Adobe has a free utility called DNG Converter. But um, you'll see here, let me just link this. So as I go across views, it stays connected. These are all DNG files. And some of these are from cameras. Some of these are, here's the, that Leica camera. I just converted it to DNG. They're fully editable inside of Mylio. So what you're running into there is probably um, a newer format DNG that Adobe just started doing some weird stuff with. Uh, when you launch the DNG conversion tool, or if you're using older versions of Photoshop, Bridge, or other tools, you can set it. The new version of Lightroom also removed the ability of you to choose which DNG format you wanted, because again, this was motivated by Adobe wanting to get their cloud costs down. So they basically are throwing away 90% of your image quality when you make a DNG now. But if you download the free Adobe Digital Negative Converter, you just choose the folder you want to convert. And you choose a destination for it and you can choose a file format for it. So generally speaking, I would suggest the 12.4 and earlier, uh, but there's really no harm in even going further back here for compatibility, you don't lose much. Um, it's all fine. So the uh, there you have it. 
does that answer the question? JC, I know you deal with this more in support as well. If there's anything you want to add about DNG. Uh, we do have an open bug where um, the latest version of the converter is creating some DNGs that Malio is not reading yeah. correctly. We think that I, they I might covered be that some... with JPEG XL and Lightroom. Yeah. No, no, not 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 the not the 1.7 DNG format. Is is something else. Um, okay. Lori ran into it. It's it's a brand new issue that we're addressing. So some people might still see that they're using DNG 1.4 and Malia is still not reading those DNGs. We're aware of it and we're working on it. Okay. No problem. Uh, Luke hey. is asking if auto tag is disabled, will incorrectly or missing metadata be corrected? Um. If auto tag is disabled, you'll be asked to tag those pictures and they'll be suggested to you in batch tagging. It doesn't automatically do it though. Like you're going to have to go back and, and re-tag those. Just, just run batch tag. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, Rich, are there any special tips you'd like to give for people when they're um, upgrading or updating this new version? Um, sure. So, and, and that's probably going to be a good place for us to wrap because we're, we're running a little bit over, but uh, I, I, I'm glad you guys are excited by everything we covered today. Uh, all you got to do when you upgrade is normally when you launch the app, it'll tell you there's an upgrade available. Like I said, this hasn't shipped yet. Um, I don't know, JC, if you've heard anything more behind the scenes. I think we're going to be shipping it later this afternoon, West Coast time, but it might be tomorrow. Um, you'll normally get a message that there's an update available. You can also go to the... Um, you can go uh, to the Mylio Photos menu on Mac and check for updates, or you can go to the Help menu, or you can go to our website and click the Download button on the homepage. Uh, usually, usually, most people's mobile apps auto-update. That's a setting that most people have on by default. Otherwise, go to the App Store, and we'll post uh, a notice in both the forum and the community when the update is live. Uh, and again, it's uh, a free update. So 24.1 is the, the next uh, major update that we'll be shipping, or not major update, but the next uh, update that'll be coming out. So we'll refer to that as 24 update one or 24.1 when you're looking for it. You will see that other numbers appear after that. So like under the hood, you'll see like this number in parentheses, that's a build number. That really just gets down like during beta testing times or sometimes as we have very minor releases, we'll we'll push those out and this number will increment and punch up. But if someone says build number, that's the number in parentheses. And Rich, uh, the team is pretty much waiting for you and I to be done with this meeting. <laughs> that's what I figured. OK, so it's my fault. But hey, we've been here showing you how to use it, so it'll be live really soon. <laughs> is everyone good? All right, well, let me hit, uh, I see two more open questions. What's the recommendation in converting antique formats? Um, if you have really old antique formats, uh, tools like um, Permute or um, Adobe Media Encoder, or what am I forgetting the, what's the good other good video one for, that's a for Handbrake, I think, JC, is that it? Handbrake is great for video, yeah. Yeah, those are great yeah. for converting video uh, formats. Uh, VLC something. is also a, a free, very useful tool. Yep. So MPEG-4 or H.265 are going to be what we recommend. Uh, if you want something that's space efficient, uh, we'll be adding support later for AV1. Um, we do also support most QuickTime MOVs. And then for images, uh, if they're you know raw files, go to the DNGs. Um, and Adobe DNG Converter is a great tool for that, and that'll work with most RAW formats. Uh, otherwise, um, if it was a high quality image, TIFF, uh, lower quality image, high quality JPEG or PNG is gonna be just fine for you, Jason. Okay. And when you're in selfie mode, the photo appears down in the library. Um, I have not experienced that bug, Walter. Um, sometimes- I haven't seen that either. Sometimes, uh, I don't know if you're Mac or Windows, Walter, I do know that sometimes Windows operating system um, reads the orientation flag from the accelerometer, and then it tries to correct the file, and then it adds its own rotation flag, and then Milio gets the file, and there's two rotation flags. So 
Walter, I'd be curious if you are using the Milio app to sync or if you've imported your pictures into something like the Windows operating system and then imported those from a folder. Because if, if you let Windows touch your iPhone photos first, sometimes Windows does bad things with, uh, with the um, accelerometer flags. So uh, your Mac, and are you syncing with Apple Photos? Or the Milio app? If you are, um, please contact support because both JC and I said never saw that one before. <laughs> so, and I've got 30,000 um, iPhone photos in here, and my kids take selfies all the time with me. So, yeah, you can contact I mean, support. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. It would yeah. be great to get an example of it so we can try to fix it. Yeah, send us a sample and we can look. Great. All right. Um, so I don't know if you guys got a chance to put that poll together. If you did, Lori, open it up. Otherwise, um, I'd love to hear in the chat. Do me a favor. Good. Answer that poll about which of these features you think uh, is most exciting to you. And uh, that's great. And do me a favor in the chat. Uh, we don't often get the, a chance for the, the engineering team who works on these features to come to these events or hear from you guys. If you see something in there that, uh, that came out today uh, or a recent improvement, a bug fix, a new feature that you like, please put a short note into chat. We're going to forward these onto the team who worked on this. You know, if you love those new contacts, for example, or the family search integration or, or whatever it is, just give us a sentence or two about why. We're not going to do anything with it except show it to the team who worked really, really hard and uh, just let them know that it's appreciated but we hope you guys in, enjoy these features and uh that you you take advantage of them okay and, and thank you guys so much for coming out we'll give you a moment or two just to put those comments into the chat pod if you would and uh angela Lori, is there anything you want to share uh, i i know that you guys have some other events coming up here soon i'm um, just make sure you join us in the community we've got lots of great events planned for you here throughout january we've added some new, if you're brand new to Milio Photos, Lori is hosting a series called Ready, Set, Go. We're doing new groups every week. So it's a small group um, thing where we take you through just the basics of getting started with Milio Photos. For those of you who've been using the program for a while longer, we have weekly coffee breaks, which are topic-based. So you can come and learn about a new topic in Milio Photos each week. And we've also opened up office hours and we're calling it Ask Angela. And so when I'm available, I think we, we're doing them on Tuesdays, right, Lori? You can come and just ask questions. It's a 30 minute session where you can come in and just ask me your questions. There's no set topic, uh, very conversational, low key. So we're here to make sure that you are successful and make sure that uh, 2024 is an awesome year for you and Milio. And I forgot, we did update the learn panel. Now in our next update, we should be shipping a native browser that'll run inside of Milio. So you can leave the learn panel open and drag it around the screen while you're working. But right now it opens up a regular web browser. I wanted to point out that this has been updated. So the first tab has all of our getting started videos. So if you haven't watched this series, this is like all the essential information of what you need to know in like a two to three minute video on how to do something very specific. And so it's super targeted. This next section lets you interact with members of our support team during business hours. And these are what we call a tier one support person. So they can help with common account issues, basic problems, or they can get things escalated if it's a bigger problem. Um, and after hours, we have a custom trained AI chatbot that has indexed all of the Milio documentation, support, and information. So when you ask a question, it can actually feed back some answers. JC, since you're our head of our customer success and support team, do you want to say anything about uh, this, this chat feature? It's almost better than me. <laughs> it, it actually gets a lot of the answers right. Um, so I, I really do encourage people to go there and, and give it a try. And if you don't want to use the chat feature, you can just go to support.malia.com and you get a similar experience. You can enter something in the in the search field there, and there's a lot of articles that will be reflected. Uh, oftentimes, the answer that you will get from support is the same thing that you see in those articles. So don't be afraid to try that first, and you might be able to sell help quicker and, than we can get to you. And that's what this button is here. And it looks like there's about uh, uh, 
150 useful articles here. So, you know, and growing every day and growing every day based on your questions. So, you know, like, you know, why did my device stop syncing? And it starts making a suggestion, right? Yep. And, you know, so it picked up on keywords here and it shows you which ones have it, right? And so you can go in or, you know, not syncing. And it's going to go through and, oh, I can't sync between devices. Okay. Oh, I want to change the sync policy on a specific device. And you'll find super streamlined, very short instructions, the, the Cliff Notes version. But if you need to, it also has a link right to the full article. So this is accessible from within the app. It does launch a web browser right now. We're almost done with the in-app browser that'll be coming in a couple of weeks. And that'll let you do it from right within the app and leave it open while you're working in Mylio. So you'll be able to just search for answers right there. We know that our program is deep with lots of features and tools and benefits, and not all of them are as easy as we'd like, and some of them are just incredibly powerful. So we want to make that stuff easier to find. So that's just the learn panel button right here at the bottom, uh, and you can open that up and it will take you right there. You'll also find that under the help menu uh, and you can open it up, or if you're in a hurry, we do have this nice little quick overlay here that kind of walks you through the basics uh, just to kind of get you in there. Okay. So I hope that that uh, gets you guys up and running. All right, well, thank you guys so much for uh, taking the time to answer the poll, for putting those comments there into chat as well. And uh, we hope you guys are excited by this. Do us a favor, remember the free version of Mylia Photos is also incredibly useful. So please tell your family and friends about us, encourage them to download the app and give it a try. Uh, we're really trying to do something different here, which is create a great tool that lets you really be in control of your photo library and uh, really keep track of everything and be able to be in charge while keeping it safe, protected, and making it easier to share with those you love. So uh, we put a lot of great improvements into this update. We've got two more updates that are gonna come in quick succession about, you know, about another month from now and a month after that. And then we'll be back down working on some big stuff for a big time summer update with a lot more big features. But we got a bunch of little things in the works and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you guys so much for coming out.